and of a new form of jazz, which perhaps fit the mood of the times better than the good time sound of the big bands. It was a more intimate, introspective sound that accurately reflected the disillusionment and loss of innocence that people seemed to feel in the period following World War II. This was the music associated with Charlie Parker, Thelonious Monk, Dizzy Gillespie, and Miles Davis. The music that became known as bebop, and it bred a whole new school of followers. Here, for example, is Vi Red leading her own group in a haunting blues dedicated to Charlie Parker. I liked looking at Vi. Unlike Ina Ray Hutton, Vi does not consciously use her beauty as a selling point for the band. She lets the beauty of her music be the band's attraction. This was the typical small group sound of the 50s, a few horns backed up by a rhythm section. In itself, this wasn't new. Before the advent of the big bands, Dixieland bands used the same instrumentation, but the style was completely different. A Dixieland band is a freewheeling affair, often with two or more players improvising at once. Here, each player takes his turn to explore in depth all of a tune's harmonic possibilities. The result is a more difficult, more complex music, which has, as does all jazz, a powerful emotional center. Unlike the big bands, this sort of small group jazz has little in the way of arrangements. The melody would be stated at the beginning, but it was quickly discarded in order to get to the real heart of the music, the improvised solos. The underlying chords would remain, but even there, jazz improvisations began straying farther and farther from the original harmonic structure. This sometimes resulted in pretty far out playing, and melody was all but forgotten. Twenty years after this piece we just heard, many jazz players are returning to the simplicity and beauty of melody. They are still working with the sound of the small group, but now the arrangements, often based on their own original compositions, are as important as the improvised solos which follow. The harmony is simplified in order to concentrate on the flow of the melodic line. Let's listen to Jane Ira Bloom and her trio perform this haunting and lovely tune that Jane wrote.
there's a difference in Jane's improvisation as well. In the earlier groups, the soloist was the dominating force. The rhythm section would back up each soloist by running through the chord changes. But here, the bass and vibes player are doing more. They are listening closely to what Jane plays, changing their accompaniment subtly in response to it. And Jane, in turn, is reacting to those changes in her improvisation. It's like a pair of facing mirrors with an infinite series of reflections. But however you describe it, the result is something special, something very moving. This kind of modern jazz has opened up a lot of harmonic and melodic possibilities, which players like Vi Red and Jane Bloom have explored through their solo improvisations. These players are very comfortable playing in small groups. But many musicians never got that big band sound out of this system. They looked for ways of combining the new music with the old sound. Some tried to do it with their own big bands, but more often the groups were smaller striking a balance between the heavy instrumentation of a big band and the greater freedom of a small group. <laughs> this is trombonist Melba Liston and her group, playing a number called Shafi, written by Mary Lou Williams and arranged by Melba. Melba began her career playing trombone with many big bands, including those of Dizzy Gillespie, Count Basie, and Quincy Jones. But she's equally respected for her work as a composer and arranger. There are only eight players in this group, but there is a richness to the texture provided by Melba's voicings, which is not unlike that of a big band. Like every good band, Melba's has several outstanding soloists. Here, for instance, is saxophonist Erica Lindsay. Erica doesn't sound like a big band soloist. She takes her cue from the improvisers of the small groups. In fact, she's playing in the style of one of the great innovators, saxophonist John Coltrane.
Here is a very talented pianist, Chessy Tansky. to this inventive drum solo by Claire Arrhenius. The avant-garde in any art form has traditionally been greeted with enthusiasm by a few and with suspicion and even outright hostility by the rest of the world. Jazz is no exception. Many modern musicians have faced great difficulty getting their music accepted at first, even those who later gained fame and prominence. This is what happened to composer and performer Carla Bley. Carla has been writing her own distinctive brand of music for many years combining such diverse elements as classical counterpoint, German beer hall music, punk rock, and of course, jazz. Over the years, she received encouragement and support from other musicians, but indifference, or worse, from critics and audiences. Then suddenly, the rest of the world caught up to her, and Carla began receiving recognition as a serious, talented composer. She has even been commissioned to write her work for the Paris Opera, Letter N, I want to go from N to the end. Here, in a rehearsal before a European tour, Carla runs through a number that advises the band exactly what to do when faced with an unappreciative audience. You are invited to join in at the appropriate moments. Just when we were starting to play, someone yelled out, take him away. Then we heard him starting to boo. What did you do? What did you do? I reacted intelligently. Here's my method. Try it and see. When somebody's running you down, you gotta turn it around, turn it around. And when they boo at me, you know what I do. I tell them, boo to you too, boo to you too. Boo to you too, boo to you too.
Well, I'm not booing. I think it's great. And I think all the jazz styles we've seen in this show are great. For there's no one style that is right. There's no one correct way to play jazz. Old is not better than new just because it's been around longer. And new is not automatically better than what came before it. All styles are part of jazz. All have contributed to its development. And anyway, jazz is not only a matter of style. It is an expression of emotion. It's music from the heart. And that's the only way it can be judged. Or as Carla said in her song, music's always good if it's real. <laughs> <laughs> 